When you do hands-on, you need supplies for the activities, and that's what today's show is all about. We're going to blow the roof off shopping for science. You're going to meet some of our most experienced science shopping sleuths who know how to find the really great bargains on classroom supplies for science activities. So let's go see what we can find out. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm Cliff. We're going to do some hands-on activities that the kids will really like. And then we're going to do some shopping for science. First activity I'd like to share with you has to do with the sense of smell. These film canisters have been specially treated. Cliff, help me out. See if you can tell me what you think that smells like. Uh, I think this one smells like orange, John. Hmm. Let's try that one and do a little comparison then. Uh, this one smells like lemon. I can see we're working on basic observations. You got it. They're real easy to make. All we do is take a cotton ball, douse it with a little bit of aroma that we get at the grocery store, put it in, seal it up, and it's good for over a year. They're great activities, lots of things you can do with them. Now, to show kids how to conceptualize the phases of the moon, we can use these styrofoam spheres and a light. If I hold a styrofoam sphere in this phase, I can see half the moon illuminated. And if I gradually move it around, I can see more and more until eventually I can see a full moon. If I continue moving this around, I can see all the phases of the moon. Well, that's pretty neat, Cliff. I'll tell you what, planetary motion and things are pretty neat. I like the chemical things. Let me show you this activity. This is called red drop, green drop. And I'll tell you what, there are some special liquids. I'm going to put a few drops down on this piece of wax paper. And notice what happens to them when they hit the surface. Yeah, they beat up. Pretty neat, huh? Well, there's my clear control substance. Now, let's take a look at what happens when I put some red ones in there. Well, that looks a lot the same, only red. Yeah, and you know what? You can take them and move them around a little bit, mix them up, combine them. They are kind of fun to play with. But we're going to take our special liquid, the green stuff. And when I put that in, see what happens? Oh, yeah. Not near as much fun as it was before. Red drop, green drop is pretty simple. The clear stuff, what do you think it is? I think it's water, John. You're absolutely right. The red is just water with some food coloring, and the green, green food coloring and water, plus a little bit of soap, I'll bet. You got it. Li Joy liquid detergent works best. And this shows how the, wa the soap breaks down the surface tension of the water molecules so that they can mix with other things very easily and wash better. Right. Surface tension is pretty, uh, pretty abstract, and this demonstrates it good. I have these two cans that are filled with water. To each can, we've attached a thermometer that we got from the aquarium store. And if you don't like those stick-on thermometers, you can also use these types. And if we put light on this, shine light on here, we'll see that, the, that these two cans will change temperature in a different way. If you'll turn the light on, John. Sure. We'll take a temperature reading of these later. Which one do you think will gain temperature faster? Well, let's see. Light colors reflect. Dark absorb. I'm going to bet on the dark one. I think you're going to be right, John. We'll check it later and find out. Great. You know what? Speaking of that, uh, using cans, this is a cat food can. I use tuna fish sometimes, too. But if you're going to do a weather unit, it makes a great barometer. Take a rubber balloon, and if you just simply cut the neck of it off, it makes a good membrane. We're going to stretch it across the top as tight as we can so that it forms a good, flexible membrane. And then we use a pointer made out of a, a drinking soda straw. Going to tape it right to the middle. This then becomes a barometer that if you put it in front of a grid or a scale, as the pressure, air pressure goes up, the balloon comes up, the needle goes down. If the, in, the opposite happens, then the needle's going to go the other direction and you can compare it to the newspaper and actually get a barometric pressure reading daily. These are interesting activities, and students really enjoy doing them. Oh, they'll have a great time with them, Cliff. Hey, Phil's out shopping for science. Let's go see what he's up to. All the great science activities that you've just seen in the classrooms can be done in your classroom with inexpensive materials purchased at a discount store. For instance, the food coloring that you noticed uh, can be purchased here for a couple of dollars. It'll go a long way, probably last you the whole year. Uh, I'm going to take that along for my activities. As far as containers go for activities, we use Ziploc bags because they're inexpensive and very handy to use and easy to use. You can also use cups instead of beakers for running various chemical reactions or, observe, or observing things. By the way, 
if you want to build the planetary models, a cheap way to support them is to use the sticks and trays that you find in the meat department. I'll throw those in and keep them. The cat food barometer that you saw, that's also a thermometer, here's the cat food can. If you recycle this, you can build the barometer. You'll need a couple other things. You'll need some balloons. You'll need some straws. And you can put the thing together and experiment for weeks and collect data. I'd like to go over to the pet department and pick up some more supplies. So come on along. Well, here we are in the pet department of the Acme Superstore. We happen to be in a good area here because we need thermometers for the heat activities. And they have them here for a little over a buck. And I think we ought to pick up a few for our science activities. Hi, this is a great place for all you freebie finders. If you'd like to stop in at your local camera store, if you need any of these for school projects, we'll be glad to save them for you. Um, just give us a call or stop in. If you want to measure things with simple machines, you have to be able to measure forces. Here's a nice simple force measure that's just like the commercial ones, works just as well, except it's very inexpensive. Look at the force it takes to lift this battery. And we can use this inclined plane to measure the amount of force it takes to drag this up the inclined plane. And we can see that it's less. That's a simple machine that's helping us do this work. Well, you're right. That works just like a spring scale. Hey, you know what else? Check out the back, the back bulletin board here. We have pulleys hooked up in a block and tackle system so that if I pull down on the string, notice how far I have to pull in order to lift that, that center pulley where the weight's suspended. Almost twice as far. Inexpensive, great ways to demo these, these activities in your classroom. And here from the materials we got from Radio Shack, you can construct a circuit board and make a light light up. But if you're going to look at circuits, you might start with something simpler. John? You know what? I think when I start with young kids, I, I just use a simple flashlight battery and a piece of wire and a pen light bulb. Kids have a hard time hanging on to the light bulbs, though, so we use a little piece of rubber tubing as a socket. It's already pre-hooked. One person then can light the bulb pretty easily, I think. And you can light this bulb on the other end of the battery as well. While you're a radio shack looking for the simple circuit activities, you also want to make sure that you get their, their 30 power microscopes. These do a ton of different things. If you were to look at something under a microscope enlarged 30 times, it would take a BB and make it look almost the size of a golf ball. Here's another use for those paint stirrers. This is a reaction timer, John. Hold your hands out just by the bottom of this, and when I drop it, see if you can catch it. Ooh. Oh, that's, it got just a little bit more than halfway down. That's pretty good, though. Boy, these are, represent thousandths of a second? Yes, they do. I'm not too good. Well, here we have some magnets that are suspended on this, this uh, wooden block and dowel. And you can see that the magnets float in the air. That's because the magnets are arranged so that they're repulsive poles are next to each other. Turn it sideways once, Cliff. You can see the gravity is involved here, too, because when they're sideways, they spread out evenly. But when they're straight up and down, they stack closer <laughs> to the bottom. Floating magnets, that's pretty neat. But you know what? Phil's out shopping for science, so we better go see what he's up to. OK. Oh, hi. You caught me in the hardware department at Acme's. Right now, I'm picking up some washers for the simple machine activity. And as, a, as you can see, we can pick these up in bulk here. The price is right, and the variety is amazing. So I recommend that you pick them up at a place where you can buy them in bulk. Let me show you a few other things that I've picked up here in the hardware area. For some of the activities with pulleys and simple machines, these awning pulleys work really well, and they're very inexpensive. Uh, you can buy them in large quantity. Again, if you talk to the manager, I'll bet you can get an additional discount. Wire for electrical circuits. Actually, this wire can be bought by the spool or any quantity that you need. But nevertheless, this is a good place to pick it up in the hardware department. The last item that I picked up is a stir stick. Right around the corner in the paint department, you can pick up a few of these or if you talk to the manager, I'll bet they'll be willing to give you enough for your classroom activities. One of the things that you can do is build the force machine that you saw back in the classroom. I'm going to take these along 
And actually, I'm going to wrap up my shopping here and rush off the Radio Shack because I hear they've got some real values over there. So I'll see you at Radio Shack. Well, I made it to Radio Shack in time, and on the way in, I picked up this 30X microscope. This is a handy device, and your young people can look at dust, they can look at crystals, or pond water. I suggest you get a couple of these for your classroom. Let me show you some of the other things that I've picked up. If you're building electrical circuits, this type of store will provide you with bulbs and sockets at a very reasonable cost. To hook up these bulbs and sockets, you might want to pick up some leads with clips on the end. These are pretty handy and they save a lot of time and they let your students experiment quickly. One of the activities that you saw back in the classroom was with magnets. Radio Shack is a good supplier of magnets. You can buy them in a variety of sizes and shapes. We happen to use these rectangular ones and the cost is low enough so that you can provide enough of these so that each student can have a set. This is a piece of 2,000 pound crushed drain pipe. What the heck are we going to do with that in a classroom? We split them in half, cut them, make them so that it's a hollow chamber and we put, fill it with sand, dirt, soil, put a grate in the end with a little bit of uh, screen on the end, makes a great erosion trough. It's a lot better in a shoebox filled or lined with aluminum foil or wax paper, and they last forever. Another item we usually get at the plastic shop or the uh, discount stores are two or one and a half inch plastic elbows. This is a great activity for taking an abstract concept such as sound and making it a little more concrete. I'm going to stretch a balloon over the end of this, get it as tight as I possibly can, and then one of the things I found kids had a hard time with was trying to explain how sound is produced by vibrations. See if you can hear this as the oatmeal drops on the, on the membrane. Pretty good. And I'll tell you what, it's even better because instead of making the sound from the tympanic membrane the way the ear works, we're going to show you how sound actually causes it to vibrate. Uh, works pretty good. Kids love it. You can use rice. Works a whole lot better. But uh, I would suggest you stay away from sand and salt and things like that because it's real close to the eyes. Other neat things that we found in the stores were plastic tubes, clear plastic tubes. In the holiday season, you can find these with uh, Bugs Bunny or Bunny Ears on at Easter time or Santa Claus at Christmas. Tennis tubes, tennis balls come in tubes like this. What we've done is taken those same plastic tubes and filled them with different types of soil. When we do that, kids can actually see what a soil profile looks like. You can put different types of soil in, rocks, stones, whatever else, and kids can see it. They're relatively unbreakable. We also use those tubes for static electricity. What we've done in this case is use the same plastic cylinder, put little plastic or paper punches in here. We're going to rub it with some wool, get a nice static charge in there. And then as you run it, an alternative or an opposite charge, those little beads are going to actually just jump right off the walls and move around inside so kids can see static electricity. One of the other things that we've done is taken mirrors, plastic mirrors, that are flexible, unbreakable, can be used for a lot of different things, and we made a hinge joint on the back. If you take a look, if we set it up just right, you should be able to see uh, mul multiple dots that are on the paper, and as you move them, you can actually see more or less depending on the position of the mirrors. If you want to get into geometry a little bit, you can use a straight black line on white paper, and you should see the image of a square inside. If we adjust it just a little bit by moving the ends closer together, you see a pentagon, and a hexagon, a septagon, octagon, and so on, until they're all gone. That's a neat activity, too, but probably one of my favorite is called a frictionless puck. We use little noisemakers we pick up at the discount store, rip the ends of them off, and then we're going to put a balloon over the end of that same noisemaker so it stays on good and snug, and pick up little pieces of scrap plastic at the uh, at Universal Plastics or other places like that. We're going to actually insert that in. First, we want to inflate the balloon. We'll pinch it shut so that the air can't escape. And then, just like an inverted air hockey table, if I put it down on a flat, hard surface, when I release the balloon, what you should be able to see is that this little plastic puck rides along on a cushion of air. 
virtually friction free. Hey, Cliff and Phil are out shopping for science someplace. Let's go see what they're up to. Your local plumbing store is a great place to get science materials. Phil's over in the PVC section. Let's see what he's found. Hi, Phil. What have you found? Hi, Cliff. Well, I was lucky enough to find these elbows that we need to build the model for the eardrum. All we have to do is stretch that rubber balloon over this, and we've got it. They've got a lot of them in the back room, and I think they'll give us a good buy for the classroom sets. Where have you been, and what is this? Take a look at this. This goes right along with the elbows. This is a sound transmission device that I build out of scraps of materials. Put your ear up to one of these openings. And when I talk softly, you can hear the sound very plainly, can't you? I can, and it comes right through. I hear the echo and everything. Yeah. I think with scraps of materials and your own ingenuity and creativity, a teacher could build one of these things for a few dollars and have it around the classroom for students to study for a long time. Well, that's great. I'm going to take some of these elbows along, and why don't we continue sleuthing over at the plastics factory? Good idea. Plastics factory, here we come. Okie doke. Hey, Cliff, this shopping for science is really great, isn't it? Yes, it's fantastic. And look at this. We have enough materials for 21 science activities. That's a whole semester of science lessons, and it only cost us $48.43 so far. Hey, that's really good. You know, we've got some money left. And it just so happens we made this stop at the plastics factory. And let's take a look around. You remember the frictionless puck? Well, this material can be used to construct those devices, and the pieces here in this rack are cut off so we can get them at a very bargain price. Look at this. This is a mirror surface that we can use, although it doesn't look much like a mirror now. If you peel back this protective coating, you can see what a nice shiny surface this is, and this can be used for our multiplying mirrors activities. Hey, that's good, and I can see this is a cutoff. And we'll get that at a good price, too, I'll bet. Let's see if we can pack all this stuff in our baskets. And I think we have enough money left over so we can go get an ice cream cone. I'll tell you, I'll buy, Cliff. Let's pack up and do that. You're on, Phil. OK. I know some of you folks out there are freebie finders. So if you just stop into your local barber shop or beauty shop in the area, they'd be glad to save you some of these plastic recyclables. We have other bottles available. And we'd be more than glad if asked to save them up for you. So feel free just to stop in and ask us for some bottles, and we'll have them available anytime you need them. I hope we've given you some good tips that will help you equip your classroom for hands-on, minds-on science. I'm sure all of you can come up with creative ways to shop for science in your neighborhood. Whether it's sleuthing or freebie finding, I think you'll find that shopping for science is fantastic. <laughs>